So it looks like it is that time again. We have another Mayo and Taxes developer diary. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad that the frequency of these seems to have increased quite a bit because we had a sizable gap between the last couple and now it's only been a week. Oh, I imagine if we have one every week now from now until the next version comes out. Oh, I'll be so happy. But alas, enough of that. Let's actually get into the dev diary and see what's what. So we're going to be talking about agriculture and farming and probably potatoes. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into it. So agriculture has always been the backbone of any civilization. Everything complex was and is built upon food surplus. Today we'll be talking about how it's handled in the mod. Previously in 2.x, agriculture was in a bit of a rough spot. People had difficulty understanding how it worked. Heck, even some of the team could lose track of how food was produced, moved, and consumed. I would agree with that. I just never paid attention to it, to be perfectly honest. It was also quite lacking in terms of data input. We didn't factor in soil quality, access to water, average temperature, as well as how much usable land there is in a province. Instead, we had innate fertility and farming efficiency. Due to data modeling issues, we were forced to assume that a province with a large population at startup would have high enough innate fertility to support that population, and we assumed that a province with sizable urban presence at startup would have enough farming efficiency to support that city. Those assumptions led to inaccuracy and distortion. We had to manually tweak the values after they were set, and even after that, we faced several problems. Moreover, it was near impossible to use the same method when, in our new model, food is just another trade good produced by industry. And again, if you want to uh, look at what you know the industries are, then I did a dev diary on the economy system uh, a few months ago, and which will be in the description. So yeah, go check that one out. So we had to adapt, and this is what we came up with. So we've got the first image here, and we have global soil quality. So if you want to know where has the best soil, I mean, here's the map for you. Uh, looking like the New World is very, very fertile. Um, South Africa, very fertile. Ethiopia area, very fertile. Those are the ones that are really standing out to me. India as well. I mean, that makes 100% sense with no sarcasm at all. That, that just makes sense. There's a freaking huge population there. Uh, England, fairly decent. Uh, Russia, fairly decent. Um, France is a lot less bright green than I would expect, but I mean, I honestly have no idea what farming soil quality is like in the real world. I just know that France had a huge population and part of that was down to having good soil. So yeah, no, no, looks good. Looks good. Uh, and then we have here global growth period, which is the number of days each year when crops can be grown. So we see that those previous um, really high soil quality areas, South Africa and Ethiopia area, they don't grow all year round. So while you have a lot of fertility in the soil, um, that soil is unusable for part of the year. So that makes sense why those areas did not have humongous populations, right? There's a, there's a bit of a, a balancing act there. Um, and you can see like the hotter areas, uh, say uh, Northern South America, Florida area in North America, India again, all of Indonesia, um, Southern China, um, you know, th those places got really strong year round growth potential. Also, you can see there just a little bit Mesopotamia, um, between the Tigris and Euphrates has also got year-round growth potential, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, no, this looks great. I believe, was this not the map that was shown? One of these was the map that was shown at the end of last week's dev diary. So, yeah, that's pretty cool as well. We finally figure out what that was. Right. First, we used a script to export how large a province is. Then we sourced some maps like uh, for soil quality, average rainfall, inundation, and average temperature. We then exported that data into each of the provinces. We used that data to calculate how good a province is for agriculture, agriculture, whatever, as well as roughly how much farmland there is in a province. As a result, we got ourselves the size and quality of farmable land for each province. Now that we have that information, integrating agriculture into the economy is much simpler. 
We made rural industry use farmland as one of its inputs and land quality affect the output. In provinces where land is abundant, the cost of rent is lower, and if the quality of the land is good, the amount of produced food trade good is higher. Lower cost and high income means higher profit, which leads the industry to expand in size. As it expands, its profit decreases and the price of its produced trade good decreases, while the price of land and labor increases. It will eventually converge to a size where income is equal to the cost, and that determines how much a rural product a province produces, as well as how much rural pro uh, population it employs in agriculture. There are many benefits to this change. The greatest benefit is that unclaimed but fertile provinces now indeed have actual and realistic potential to grow. It's no longer burdened by arbitrary restrictions like how many people it has at startup. Places like the Ukraine and California now have enough potential to support a large population, and the reason and cause are grounded in reality. Uh, that's awesome. Um, one of the big problems with colonization is you just never saw populations grow to anything like what was realistic, because when there's so few people there at startup, um, obviously because it's uncolonized, then there was just no there's no kickstart to the, the the growth um you have to really really work for it uh way more than was really feasible so yeah having like especially um you know southern the united states area um mexico and the uh, caribbean like these places look like they're gonna make an awful lot of food and can support pretty large populations so that is really cool. That's a big, good change. I like it. I like that a lot. And then, before we end the diary, let's keep up the tradition. I mean, it's only been one, but sure, it's a tradition now. Uh, by finishing it with a new mystery map mode. Some people came close to the answer with our last mystery map mode, which if you haven't noticed was global growth period. So I hope this one receives some love as well. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, there's a bunch of map modes. Well, it's not. It's the same map mode. It's just uh, different regions. So what do we got here? Well, this makes me think population. Because if you have the start, um, when you start the game, you get to choose whether New World natives, as in like the tribes in North America, um, are on the map or not. And this looks like not. So I think it's got something to do with countries. Um, you can see there Mexico City is very much brighter than the rest of it. So it could be something to do with population. That could certainly do it. Is India uh, India's not really green enough for it to be population though I don't think. I mean, maybe it is. Although, I mean, looking at the pass here, I doubt so many people are living here at the time. So maybe not. Uh, Byzantium looks very green as well. Uh, what about Europe? Uh, Po River Valley is very green. So is Genoa. Um, hmm. It could be something like supply limit. Definitely could be something like supply limit. Um, Stockholm's greener than the rest of the area around it. London is greener. Um, hmm, very interesting. Very interesting. I think it might be supply limit or something to do with supply limit. Because imagine you wouldn't have so much supply around here because it's uncolonized. So this might be something to do with how supply limit fits into the other systems, uh, like population, um, colonization, that kind of thing, food. Um, yeah, I'm thinking it might be something to do with supply. That's my guess, but if you have a better guess, feel free to leave it in the comments below. All right, what's here? Hmm. Because this starts uncolonized. Whereas a bunch of this area is colonized. And then this is uncolonized, and that's why it's so red. So 
maybe uncolonized provinces have much lower uh, supply limit. I don't know. I think I think it's got something. It's I think it's linked to supply limit. I think, but I can't. Obviously, I can't be sure. I don't know for sure. But anyway, if you have a better guess, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you thought of the Dev Diary. What you think of the changes. And did you understand food in the previous versions of My Own Taxes? Because I definitely did not. And this looks like it's a lot more understandable. And uh, yeah, it's a good change. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye for now.